Hello, I'm Sean Servas from FEMA headquarters, and today we're going to go over module three sub application review. This is the third module in our FEMA go applicant training courses. Uh, there are six modules in total, and we'll hope you can join us for the other ones. Many of you joined us for module two, which was organization management. So today we're going to go over sub application review. Let's take a moment to review what we will cover today. At the end of this module, you'll be able to recognize why it is necessary to review sub applications, describe the sub application review process, and identify the possible outcomes of a sub application review. Let's look at the different types of sub applications available in the BRIC and FMA programs. You will notice that the types available to sub organizations are a bit different than the types available to organizations. We discussed organizations and sub organizations in module two, but let's review their relationships again. Sub organizations can submit hazard mitigation planning, project scoping, and project sub applications to their state tribal or territorial emergency management organizations, that is the applicant organization. Plan sub applications are requests for funding for developing new or updating existing multi-hazard mitigation plans. Project scoping sub applications are just that, a request for funds to help develop the scope of a project. These types of sub applications were previously called advance assistance in the legacy mitigation e-grant system. These are sometimes necessary before a sub-application for a large or multi-jurisdictional project can be developed. Project sub-applications are for both construction and non-construction mitigation activities. Examples of non-construction projects include developing codes and regulations, public education and outreach initiatives, and natural resource protection strategies. Available only to organizations are management cost sub applications, where organizations can apply for funds to cover indirect costs and administrative expenses that occur when administering an award and the associated sub awards. Sub organizations, on, on the other hand, can list management costs as a line item in the budget section of their sub application according to the notice of funding opportunity. You might also notice that there is a technical assistance sub application. This is only available to the grant recipients in the flood mitigation assistance program for entities that have received a flood mitigation assistance award in the past over a certain dollar amount according to the notice of funding opportunity. Sub applicants can't apply directly to FEMA for funding. They must go through a state, tribe, or territorial applicant in order to receive funds. Each year, the applicant bundles one or more sub applications into a grant application and submits it to FEMA. When a sub application is approved by FEMA, the funds pass through the applicant, now the grant recipient, to the sub applicant, which is now the grant sub recipient. Applicants check sub applications for completeness. For more information on how a sub applicant should review their own sub application before submitting, see module six in the sub application uh, web conference training series. Those are also available on YouTube. Sub applications are also reviewed by grant applicants to ensure that they are consistent with their mitigation priorities as described in their hazard mitigation plan. A yearly funding limit is established in the notice of funding opportunity. This is the maximum amount the combined application requests can total. The notice of funding opportunity may also include guidelines on the number of sub applications that can be included in one grant application. To find submitted sub applications to review, I'm going to open FEMA Go and go through the steps to manage the sub organization grants. So this is the grant applicant landing page like we saw in module two. And to get to the sub applications that are available for review, hover over grants and click on manage my sub organization grants. 
and you'll see uh, some of the different statuses that are attached to the sub application to give you an indication of where this is in the process. Uh, this one is approved by a recipient. This one is submitted to a recipient, so it's available for review. And this one is pending submission, so it is um, it's available to continue. You can work on this simultaneously with the sub applicant, uh, or you can just view it. So if you want to review the sub application, you'll click the drop down menu here and select review sub application. Then as we saw in the screenshot, uh, the review panel will appear on the right side and you'll have all the sections of the sub application available on the left navigation panel with the information displayed in the middle. And your comments that are in, entered into the review panel here will, will show up in the recommendation history. So there are review instructions um, for going through the completeness and all the information attached in the application. You have the ability to add supporting documents. If you make a change to the sub application that's not allowed, you'll be displayed with an error message. And it'll give you the opportunity to fix those. And then there are four different possibilities here for approved by recipient, approved by recipient stockpile to save the sub application for later, or you can return the sub application for revision to the sub applicant and have them make changes. And when you're all done with that, you provide a justification, choose whether or not to send an email and hit submit. You may see a very long list of sub applications on your Manage My Sub Organization grant screen. Here on the right, you have the ability to search, filter, and sort sub applications by status the sub application type, or you can do text searches for name or title. So let's take a minute to review what we've covered today. Now you should be able to recognize why it is necessary to review sub applications, describe the sub application review process, and identify the possible outcomes of a sub application review. One of the main reasons you need to review the sub application is that only approved sub applications can be attached to the grant application. And we'll cover that in a future module. Here's some resources that will be helpful if you want a refresher on what we've covered today. There's a link to the FEMA Go user manual, uh, which you can also click to by just going to fema.gov slash brick and looking for the support, the FEMA Go support materials. FEMA Go has a help desk, which is FEMA Go at fema.dhs.gov, and they also have a toll-free number for technical support. And if you want more information uh, about the BRIC program or the FMA program, you can go to fema.gov slash BRIC or fema.gov slash FMA, like I mentioned before or this is the full link that you'll be taken to. Also on that page, you'll find program support materials, such as the technical criteria and the qualitative criteria, and uh, of course, links to the notice of funding opportunity and the notice of funding opportunity fact sheet. So thank you for joining me for module three, and I hope you can join us for module four, creating an application. Thank you.